In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, this video I want to talk to you a little bit about and remind you of the importance of praying the Chaplet of Divine Mercy every day and offering it reparation for the sins of this country. Um, there are a number of things that I have seen on the, uh, the internet that I want to talk to you a little bit about and kind of make you aware of if, you ha if you're not aware of it already. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to do videos, but I have had time to kind of, you know, look around and, and, and watch a few and just the movement, the way movements of things kind of go. Um, one of the things that I've noticed right off the bat, and I'm, again, I just want to make you guys aware of it, is a lot of these accusations against Pope Francis that were being made against him about ordaining women deacons and women priests and, you know, all this stuff about the synod. The people that were screaming that all of a sudden have gone in a completely different direction after his interview on 60 Minutes. And so this is one of the things, one of the tools that they seem to use is they just go to the next thing, go to the next thing, go to the next thing. You know, it's like the next big story, but they never backtrack on the things that they said um, or they continually try to pick little things out to attack the magisterium and the Pope. And I think as we towards move towards the election, you're going to see a lot of these people move towards uh, the area of politics and things like that. Um, I don't know that uh, I was surprised that what happened with uh, the president's conviction. I kind of knew they were going to convict him from the beginning. Uh, it's really, it's really sad what's happening in our country, and we really need to pray um, that God would pour out His Spirit. You know, I think that you're going to see more of a Christian and a Catholic revival, uh, more of a Eucharistic revival, but you're also going to see persecutions increase as well. And uh, one of the things that I've spoken about previously, uh, specifically, uh, the first time was when I did the interview for the book, and I spoke of massive persecutions of the church from within and without, and we are seeing that. It, 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 the persecutions coming from within the church are absolutely relentless, and it's coming from both sides, the very, very far right and the very, very far left. Um, it's one of the reasons that I've talked so much about staying in the middle of the boat, staying obedient to the magisterium. Um, I think a post that I put up was um, was Father Gobi. Okay, when he was, you know, he's named a servant of God. But what you know, what dawned on me was that in that little book, I believe he talks about being obedient to the Pope and the bishops in union with him being obedient um, to the magisterium. And so this is telling because a lot of these people that, uh, that are attacking the magisterium um, are also talking about prophecy in the church. Um, and I'm talking about both the far right and the far left. And there are some that are in the middle that are doing the same thing, you know, um, so you're going to see a lot of it move towards politics. Uh, and the reason I bring this up again is because it's something to really be aware of. If, if, you, if you listen to certain voices for any period of time and all they do is attack the church, attack the church, attack the church, and all of a sudden, like I say, Pope Francis corrects them and you know says, no, we're not, <laughs> no woman will ever be ordained a deacon or a priest. They never go back and apologize for all the suspicion they caused or all of the scandal that they caused. Um, in looking back on one of the videos that I did, I think it was Illumination Part 1. I was really naive to a lot of this, and I can tell you now, in looking back on it, um, that now that I'm not naive to it and I understand the game that's being played, I was scandalized by some of these people. Um, both on the left and on the right, people that I thought could be trusted and really couldn't. And um, when they're attacking the magisterium and planting some suspicion, that's a red flag, okay? 
Um, the other thing that I'll tell you is that the longer this document is out um, on Marian apparitions, I think what you're going to see is a lot more of these blogs and these websites and these YouTube channels and things that promote these seers. You're going to go. You're going to start seeing them distance themselves from it, and they should. That's not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Um, and, and again, move into the area of politics with the election coming up. This is a really, really important election in our country. And, uh, you know, we, we have a choice to make. And it, it's, uh, I think the majority of the American people um, are kind of aware of what's going on. Um, but there's a bigger plan here, okay? And I'm going to be the first... Well, I'm not going to be the first to say it, but it, the first time I believe I have said it is that the deep state is real. And I've known that for a long time. Um, there are also, you know, those within the church that want to do her harm, both uh, in authority and also very um, popular lay people that want to do it harm. And we really... What's so important right now is to pray to be able to hear the voice of God. And that comes in, in prayer. It comes in silence. Um, don't be surprised if, if trials come our way or trials come your way. Um, I would say that the fastest way to overcome things that would lead you to despair, I've talked a little bit about this before, is being able to discern things. It's like, you know, these different um, blogs and YouTube sites and news agencies and, you know, now the politics and it, anything that's going to bring you, um, you know, anxiety, fear, um, worry, uh, you know, chip away at your hope. That's not coming from God. And so it, it's a really good idea, especially in the times that we live, to, to kind of turn all, take some time to turn all those voices off and spend time in prayer. And I'm talking about in silence. And that's really where we hear God. We hear God in silence. It's that soft whisper that speaks to our hearts. And, um, you know, there's, it's, it, it's good for spiritual growth for um, us to go through periods of desolation and I'm speaking from experience okay there there are times where it seems like everything is lost and there's no hope and you you can't feel God's presence you can't feel the Lord one of the things I'll tell you about this is that it when you when you can't feel the presence of God that's when he is closest to you and it is a test of faith. He'll never let us be tested beyond our strength. Okay. But I think you're going to see some things in this country as this election gets closer. Um, you know, you're going to see, it's amazing the way it works. It's like one side, it's okay to riot and burn down buildings. <laughs> but if the other side raises their voice, you know, they're, they're persecuted or put in jail or whatever else. Um, silence on social media. <laughs> One of the things that I found fascinating about this um, is uh, with with Donald Trump being um, found guilty was it seemed to me, and I'm not saying this is what's going on. I have my personal views, but I'll keep those to myself. But one of the things that I found um, kind of interesting about this was that it seemed to mirror what happened in, in Ukraine. Um, in Ukraine, the United States went in, we removed a government, we put Zelensky in power. Um, Zelensky silenced his political opponents with, through social media, silenced them. And then when the war started, he called off the elections and then began to put his, his, uh, his political opponents in jail. And that's my fear here, is that there is a bigger plan going on, which I, I am absolutely convinced of. Um, in which that we, we will see the exact same tactics um, used here in the United States. 
And so, you know, we, we interfere a lot. You know, I love our country. I, I love um, being a citizen of the United States. I believe in the Constitution of the United States. But at the same time, um, government has gotten out of control. It's really been taken away from the people. And historically, governments go bad and become tyrannical. Um, the, the one thing that we have in this country um, is a, it, that can go against that is the Christian foundation and, um, and the Constitution of the United States, our rights, okay? And so it, I just really, really feel it's important to double down um, on praying the chaplet of divine mercy every day and offering it in reparation for the sins of this country. Because I think as the, as the election gets closer, um, my fear is and what I sense is that you'll see the war between Russia and Ukraine escalate. And also you'll see um, some things very well could escalate in the Middle East. They already are. Um, and so we really, really need to pray. You know, <laughs> um, it's amazing to sit here and watch it. Uh, I will say that with the, with the time that I've had off, um, I've had a, I've had a lot of time to delve into the writings of Luisa Picaretta, which I'm I'm finding um, profound, and uh, which I figured they would be. I read the dissertation to begin with, and I, I think I have a good understanding of the theology of it. But it's a different thing to go through her writings, and and read it that way. And so I began at the beginning of those, and I'm kind of working my way through. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say, the main point of this is, is that now more than ever, we have to be discerning. Now more than ever, we have to really, really pay attention to what we're listening to and what we're watching. And when I say watching, I, what I'm talking about is I want you to stand back and I want you to watch for patterns, okay? Because you, you'll have certain people that will, you know, be undermining the magisterium, bashing the magisterium, um, you know, causing suspicion with Pope Francis and all kinds of things like that. And all of a sudden, you know, he does this interview on 60 Minutes. And like I say, they've completely changed their tune. And now they're moving on to other things. Um, they're moving on to politics or they're moving on to the election or they're moving on to... Uh, uh, other things that they want to want to pick on, but they never go back and fix it. The other thing that I've seen is now there's just this from these same people that were attacking the magisterium on both sides. Um, now, now on the uh, a lot of them on the right, they've got I don't know where this came from, but it all like started over again. All of a sudden, this attack on the on the Catholic charismatic uh, movement or the Catholic charismatic renewal. <clears throat> and I'm not sure why the focus. I think maybe to detract their viewers from the fact that they were attacking the Pope for something that he was never going to do, namely ordaining women deacons. And um, now they're attacking the charismatic movement again. And so one of the things that I would say about that real quickly is that very often what I hear, the, the subject matter is um, speaking in tongues or the gift of tongues. And... I, I think, I can't be certain, like for sure, but I think that maybe one of the words that may be throwing people off, and the, re the reason I say throwing people off is because you have exorcists out there that say Pentecost happened only once and it's never going to happen again. Okay, well, what do we do with um, the servant of God, uh, Father Gobi, who describes the second Pentecost and who's now approved by the church? Um, we have traditional uh, priests and exorcists saying there is no such thing as the gift of tongues. And I, I know just from experience that that's not true. There is a gift of tongues. I think where the word is, I think it's the wording. Um, there's a difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. And a, a prayer gift is something that's given to an individual for them, for their building up. Okay, as we're speaking in tongues is speaking in another language in which Paul says there should be someone to interpret what that person's saying. Okay, and then the others are to discern 
if what was said is actually um, uh, inspired by the Spirit. But I think that that may be where the the confusion is, is because it's the word speaking, and so you'll hear uh, charismatics, Catholics. <clears throat> that may or may not have the gift of tongues that are familiar with it in, in either way, they will say, well, yes, yes, there is such a thing as speaking in tongues. Um, the gift of speaking in tongues, from what I understand, is rare. Um, the, the prayer gift of tongues seems to be more prevalent, okay? And with that said, there can be abuses on both sides, okay? But I, I, this is what I see. All of a sudden, there's this big attack on the, on the charismatic renewal. And, um, you know, the gifts of the Spirit are real. I would, I would say, um, in that regard, uh, for those who do not believe that the gift of tongues exists, okay, these priests or deliverance ministers or exorcists, my question to them would be where then where you know where does the gifts come from with the groups that help you in in deliverance or in exorcism you know gifts of prophecy or gifts of a word of knowledge or gifts of wisdom um gifts of discernment you know it, it's like we want to pull it seems that they just want to pick on the gift of tongues yet these same people rely on people around them that have spiritual gifts in order to assist them in deliverance ministry or exorcism. So where do they get their gifts? You know, who's to say that their their gifts are, you know, um, not from the spirit too. So I don't, it seems to be just picking on the, on the, uh, the gift of tongues thing. So um, there are three types and I, I know I'm running off, but again, there are three types. There's an evangelical gift. There is a prophetic gift, okay? and there is a prayer gift. And so the evangelical gift is what happened at Pentecost. Um, the prophetic gift is the one in which you would need someone to discern what's being, or uh, interpret what's being said, and then the others discern, okay? The prayer gift is for the person. It is to build the person up in the spirit. And it's a very personal thing. And I know that it exists um, for a fact, um, so, you know, I, I wouldn't get into a, to a long debate about it. I think that uh, there's no reason to, I, you know, it, when you know some, it's like looking at the sky and saying, I, well, I know it's blue and someone says it's red. Well, you know, why, why argue with them? It's pointless. It's, it's blue and, it, you know, it always will be. <clears throat> I think what would be interesting is to have... Um, I think it would be interesting to hear a discussion between two intellectuals and, that are uh, familiar with the gifts um, speak on this gift of tongues because I think it would clear up a lot of confusion uh, in, the, in the process. Um, but again, I think the word that's throwing everybody off is speaking in tongues. So when you say speaking in tongues, you know, someone will interpret it as, well, you, you're speaking in, an, in another language as where a prayer gift um, can can be that, but it's really a, it's the soul praying, it's the spirit praying through the soul, or angelic tongues, the gift of angelic tongues. Um, it's a prayer gift that's given for the person to build the person up in spirit, okay? So I know there's a lot of stuff out there, so I kind of wanted just to give my two cents on those, on, on that subject, um, because that's where the whole focus has shifted now, a lot of it. <clears throat> uh, again, with the papal document that's come out, I think what you're going to see is a lot of people distancing themselves from these seers that are have, have yet to be approved by the church, okay? Um, and probably for good reason. I don't think that's a bad idea because, as I've said before, 95% of them are, are not authentic, okay? I, I, there's red flags there. There are contradictions there. There's distortions of Scripture, uh, they attack the Pope. They say, you know, he's an anti-Pope. All kinds of crazy stuff. So you want to stay away from that stuff. Um, the most important thing is, you know, again, with the election come up, I've talked about this before, don't get caught up in the new fray because that's, it's just so surprising to me 
<laughs> that I found this in the church. I never, I would have never ever thought that these things were going on. But people will move from one soap opera to the next soap opera to the next soap opera to the next, and it just turns into gossip and slander and false accusation. And you know, it, it's just amazing to me uh, some of the, the level that some of these people will go to to promote their agenda, whether it be traditional far right radical traditionalism or far left um, progressivism in the church um, and we see in the same thing in politics it does the same thing <clears throat> but the next new fray that's coming up is this political thing okay and the election and things going on like that um, I have a feeling that if this if what happened to President Trump goes to the Supreme Court the conviction will be overturned but make no mistake about it there are those within government that that is the last thing that they want to happen and they will cause man-made disasters like covid like um you know the riots um uh the whole black lives matter thing um which was you have some people there that you know were legitimately legitimately complaining you know, and then got drawn into the crowd. But you also had people that were financially supporting this and paying for it. Okay. You know, you know, one of the things you notice is all of a sudden there's an executive order to lock up the border. Well, why now? <laughs> you know, and what's to keep them from putting them on planes and just flying them in rather than letting them walk? So our country's in a lot of trouble and we need to pray for our country very, very much. Um, and I will continue to... Um, to push uh, and and remind people of the prayer that was requested, and that is the chaplet of divine mercy, every single day, and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by the United States. When you pray the chaplet at three o'clock, um, as I do, you know you add in all of the intentions that you would normally add in. But add that intention in as well, and, this specific, and specifically and especially for the sin of abortion. Okay. Um, don't lose hope in God. You know, I, I can tell you just from my own personal experience, there have been a number of times where I have gone through what I would describe as a dark night of the soul or desolation or um, just feel, feeling being crushed under the weight of the, of the crosses. And, but God will never test you beyond your strength. And if you, he, he will always give you the faith. If you hold on to that faith, then he will draw you through and, and bring you out the other side, um, a new creation, okay? Stronger in faith, um, more trust in his mercy, um, also more aware of, of our own defects or, you know, my own defects is the way it worked. Um, but we want to stay humble. We want to stay humble and, and, you know, don't forget where we came from. You know, that's really key to understanding the mercy that's been shown to us. It helps us to show others mercy. It helps us to pray for those who have yet to have their eyes opened. Okay. And so be very, very aware of, um, of ill feelings towards others, uh, whether it be in the political realm or in the religious realm, or just even in your family, be very aware of that because what Satan wants to do is he wants to spread hate. He wants to spread destruction. That's what all these wars have to do with. That's what all this political stuff has to do with. He wants to cause agitation. He's not only doing it in the world, but he's doing it in the church. And so, you know, um, be open to the movements of the Holy Spirit. Pray to be able to stay in a state of grace. Stay humble, yet confident in, in the promises that Christ has made us. And remember, Jesus said not to worry about tomorrow, that today holds enough evil uh, as it is. It's, it's enough to deal with. We don't need to worry about tomorrow. He also said, don't worry what you are to eat. Don't worry what you are to wear. Have no anxiety, have no fear trust in him okay and so um one of the, if you find yourself f being tempted to lose hope or being tempted to fall into despair 
or anxiety and fear, the very the fastest way out of that is with an open mouth, begin to praise the name of God. Blessed be your name. You could be our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And when you start praying like that out loud and blessing God, it's really the way prayer should begin. All of our prayer should begin with praise. We were created to praise God. When when we praise God in that way, all of a sudden, and you will feel this, literally feel this, um, you will feel the fear, the despair, the anxiety, the lack of hope will just dissipate. And, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit and consolation. So remember that as we're moving forward, especially uh, as we move towards the election. You know, I think, as I said, I think you're going to see a lot of agitation on both sides, a lot of accusation on both sides. Um, some things that, you know, may be shocking or stunning. Uh, I wouldn't put anything past the devil in the time that we're living in. Um, the most important thing, as I've said before, in the right now, in this moment, is intimacy with God. We have to grow in intimacy with God. Read the scriptures. Read the diary of Faustina. Read the writings um, of Louisa Picaretta. And, and look forward to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because it is coming. And, uh, you know, we got some things to go through before we get there. Um, we may, even, may not even live to see it. But the most important thing is that we spend eternity with Christ. Um, I would ask for your continued prayers. Uh, um, as I've, I've got some work to do in therapy so for a few months with, with my back. So um, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty determined guy. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this. You know, I'm going to be fine. Um, that's just my my attitude. I get I've always, I kind of learned this a long time ago. The way I approach things like this is I I never lose. I either win or I learn. And so nine times out of ten, it's a little bit of both, and there's kind of a balance there. But if you pro if you approach things in that way, you know, even in the spiritual life, you know, if you fall, um, learn from the fall. You know, find out how you fell dissect it pray about it understand the tactics of the devil in your own life and when that comes around again you won't lose you you know you won't fall you'll you'll win okay so you never lose because the, the mercy of god is always there you never lose even if you fall okay so we either we never lose we either win or we learn and you know as i said the most important thing that I can tell you right now um, is to pray the chaplet of divine mercy every day and to offer in reparation for the sins committed by the United States. There is no doubt in my mind that there are people in this world in very, very powerful positions that want to see the beginning uh, or the escalation of World War III. And for no other reason than, um, you know, the Marxist communist agenda. And that's, you know, bottom up, top down, and inside out. They just, they transform, okay? They, they take power in, in the midst of chaos. And um, so Satan has an agenda. Pray for our country. Pray for our Pope and, and our priests and our bishops. Uh, continue to pray for me. And know that I pray for you guys every single day. Um, I would also ask that you pray for this special intention of mine. I don't, I'm not going to say what it is, but um, God knows what it is. And I'm asking for just resolution in something that's very beautiful that I think Satan kind of wants to twist. So uh, <laughs> it's an amazing thing how Jesus always asks us to give up the things that we love just so he can give us those things back or even better things to love more. So don't lose hope. And... Uh, Remember, we never lose. We either win or we learn. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.